Hello and welcome to the Bubbling Up Podcast, a show about the people and places of Hot Springs, South Dakota, and the Southern Black Hills. I'm your host, Justin Gosman, and this show is coordinated through the Hot Springs Area Chamber of Commerce. Bubble Up. The Cambridge Dictionary defines Bubble Up as to rise to the surface or to become obvious. And that's why this show came about. I want the stories behind our fascinating small South Dakota town to rise to the surface and be heard. Hot Springs, South Dakota, population 3,460 today, is a community in the southwestern corner of South Dakota, about 50 miles south of Mount Rushmore. Founded in 1890, we got our name from, you guessed it, naturally warm mineral springs that bubble up from underground. The stories seem endless, and it's my hope that this show will enlighten not only the fellow residents of and potential visitors to Hot Springs as to the intriguing history of our community, but also to its ongoing inner workings today, the stories behind our local businesses and nonprofit organizations and events, the voices that make a community what it is and that are working to make it what it can be. I hope you'll join me on this journey. Uh, we're sitting down with Carol Foster here, uh, who is one of the nominees for Citizen of the Year. Congratulations, Carol. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, I heard that you, uh, you found out about your nomination in a very surprising way. You found out about it when you got the Chamber newsletter. How did it feel uh, finding out that you were nominated for Citizen of the Year? I was shocked. I was just l reading the newsletter and going through the pages, and I turned it and saw my name and had no idea, <laughs> and honestly, it was overwhelming and um, just such an honor really it was moving yes yeah and it's it, I, I love that we get to honor the people in our community that are doing things for the benefit of others and in the case of, of you um, for many many years now uh, over 15 years ago now um, you started Sandstone Singers and have been leading the charge uh, bringing entertainment to the community. Um, so l let's uh, give, to set a baseline uh, for folks, um, tell us a little bit about how you got to the Hot Springs area, how, how you found uh, Hot Springs to make it your home for so many years. Sure. Um, I had been living for over 20 years in Alaska, my husband and, and I, and um, my family had been, my parents were originally from Watertown, and so we would take a vacation and get out of Alaska every year. And one year I told him, let's go to South Dakota. And he thought I was nuts. He didn't have <laughs> any idea why would I want to go to South Dakota. So I dragged him here and we spent a month and oh, wow. uh, went all over. I brought him to the Black Hills. And from then on, I couldn't get him to go anywhere else. <laughs> so every year we came to the Black Hills and we finally decided we wanted the sunshine. We wanted the small town and the... Um, just the morals of the mm -hmm. community there in the Black Hills. And so we uprooted our family and <laughs> brought them here and, and love it. Very cool. So tell us a little bit about how, how Sandstone Singers got started um, and, and where that idea came from um, to, to fill that need in the community. Well, I had been in choirs going through school and nothing uh, professional training or anything. But then when I moved here, I uh, was part of the Sweet Adelines group in Rapid City with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And so we would travel back and forth to Rapid City with uh, rain, snow, and shine. And, and every week we would go up there. Um, and one day we got home and we were sitting in the living room and I said, I don't know why we couldn't have a group like this in Hot Springs. <laughs> and so we thought there was a need for the women, for uh, or singers, actually anybody, to to have a place to... Um, share their love of singing and also for performing and I do remember that one of the things in um, that I liked about a group here um, w that we could start our own way and do what we wanted we wanted to be able to perform more yeah and Sweet Adeline's is very tight very professional mm -hmm. group extremely good but we the new group had decided they wanted it a little bit looser yeah and they wanted it to be about fun and they wanted to be about performing in the community and not just you know one big performance but lots ah. of lots of going out into different venues and sharing with the 
with the public. Yeah, and and you've uh, with Sandstone Singers, um, the groups performed all over the community. Um, tell us a little bit about how because you have a season that you do, um, and then you have so you have your summer season, and then I know around Christmas time you do a lot of Christmas gigs. Um, yeah, at some of the you know like dinners and um, at some of like the the I know you perform at the stay at home and um, so tell us a little bit about how how those are done each year. Sure. Um, we have a summer season which we started February first. We take a little bit of a break in the winter time, and um, we'll we'll rehearse for about four months, mm -hmm. and then um, we offer it up to the people we know. We've got an <laughs> email list and say we're ready to we're ready to go. And then they just start sending us the requests. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do that through, we'll do performances through August. And then in um, September 1st, we start singing Christmas music. <laughs> uh -huh. And we sing Christmas music heavy for three months. And then December 1st, we do uh, the Christmas performances. We do about 10 in four, ten in two weeks. Oof. So it is. That's very yeah, tight. We used to have them more spread out, and the gals, um, it's, a, it's a group effort on everything. And we said, would you rather have it spread out all through December and take up every weekend? Yeah. Or would you rather cram it in the first two weeks? And so we do <laughs> the first two weeks of nonstop performances. And then as, uh, at about the middle of the month, we're done. Yeah. And so then we know we've got time of our own for family and things. Mm -hmm. But we, it's a blast. We, it's. Uh, yeah, one night, you, some nights we say, where are we? <laughs> where, yeah. where are we going? <laughs> are we going? <laughs> At the last minute, we'll get phone calls. And where are we supposed to be? <laughs> what time? <laughs> um, so how do you, for your summer season, obviously with Christmas time, you're going to focus more on songs with that theme or, or geared towards the season. How do you pick the songs for your, your main season? Well, we have a, um, I hold, keep a library organized for the songs, mm -hmm. which now takes two file cabinets. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, we send out the list to the group, and the group it votes on, you know, pick, I always tell them, like, pick three songs you'd love to do this year. Give me one song you'd never want to sing this year. Mm -hmm. And so we try to have the whole group decide on the songs. And we bring in new songs every time we okay. can come up with it. Um, and add to our library so we bring in um, about oh six to eight new songs okay. every season and switch out our program every year. And, and what genres do they come from? Like what, what style of music do you perform? There, it's a real variety. We'll have Broadway and uh, cowboy music and um, some jazz tunes. Mm -hmm. We've done some reggae <laughs> and it's, it's kind of fun. We've had times when we were singing, trying to sing, um, I think it was a Christmas song from Jamaica, huh. and I told them they all, they needed to stop sounding like they were from Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had to sound like they were from Jamaica, and it was a little hard <laughs> to try to change our minds. We have had Celtic tunes, um, a real variety, sometimes rock will go. We've had some t time yeah. trying to get... Uh, some of the rock and roll stuff to yeah. get that beat. It's it's a change in your brain. I can imagine. Well, and, and I imagine it's a little easier because you've got people that are more maybe familiar with some of those like mid 20th century pop tunes um, or, or like soul or R&B type songs. Right. Um, and those are, I imagine, very popular with folks. Um, so you mentioned having a whole group that, that votes on that. How, how do you work with so many personalities uh, and, and bring it all together uh, under one roof and, and manage to, to get it all going in one direction because I imagine that's no easy task. Uh, even just even just serving on committees and stuff uh, can be sometimes you know a little bit of a test. Um, how, how, do, how do you make that happen? Well I'm I love organizing things. <laughs> so, uh, that's kind of what I've done, and it just comes naturally. And so I keep in good contact with all of them. I've got all the singers with email. I have them in groups on um, text messaging, mm -hmm. so I can get them at the last minute. We've had that where we'll, you know, everybody's traveling to Custer, and all of a sudden, there's a terrible thunderstorm and we've got to catch everybody and try to find out where they're going to all meet right. and change the location. And so um, I just keep good tabs on everybody. <laughs> I think they get, they get sometimes 
a little tired. The emails, they're like, <laughs> oh, one more email from Carol because we'll, um, after rehearsals every Thursday night, then I usually spend at least an hour or two going over the rehearsal in my head and sending him notes yeah. about what needs to be fixed. Sometimes it's hard to say at a rehearsal um, little things. Yeah. Little little things that need to be just fixed and and things. So I keep up with them on that and the songs, um, trying to get everybody a little bit of a say, but then the bottom line is sometimes I have to say that's because I said so. Yeah. And <laughs> that's that's hard because these are all friends. Yeah. You know, absolutely. so they're not they're not paid employees or any you know, it's mm-hmm. just so we do it that way and try to have the group decide. Very cool. Um, so over the years, what have been some of the favorite um, um, songs or, or memories or, or venues that you've performed? What, what have, like, if I, what are the ones that stick out right now in your mind? Sure. Um, I can remember we went one year to Pier and did the tree lighting at the Capitol. Oh, I bet that, that was cool. That was so neat. The acoustics in that Capitol were just, I mean, you could hear it echoing down. It was beautiful. Uh, we drove home in a blizzard. So we haven't oh, no. done it again. We all want to do it, but it was a horrid, horrid trip home. Some of us ended up stuck oh, no. on the other side. And um, so we haven't done it again, but singing there was fun. Another moment, uh, one time we were singing at the VA. It was Christmas time, and we went into that big, is it called the atrium, that yeah. big central piece. And one of the gals started singing Silent Night. And it just echoed through there. I mean, tears were rolling down our faces. Mm-hmm. The sound of it was beautiful. People were coming out and listening. So some moments like that that were a lot of fun. Very cool. Um, so one thing um, that got mentioned uh, when you were nominated for Citizen of the Year um, was that uh, you know a lot of the women that are in Sandstone Singers appreciate that you recognize the unique contributions and talents of each and every member of the group. Um, and th- I think that reflects in, in the leadership style that, that, uh, that comes out when you guys perform because you see uh, a level of respect and you see uh, that everyone is on the same page. I, I just wanted to say that, that that is so appreciated in the community. Um, and I think a lot of people would agree that, that Sandstone Singers brings a lot of joy to people in the community. So thank you so much for that, Carol. Thank you, too, for that so, compliment. Yeah, and uh, one, one of the things that we, we ask all of the interviewees uh, on the show is, what are your favorite things about living in Hot Springs? I know you talked about when you moved to Hot Springs, you were definitely looking at... Uh, you know the the morals and and the kind of small town vibe, but more specifically, like what are some of your favorite things to do, and and you know more specifically, you know things that you like to to go out and see, or you know things like sure. that. Yeah. Well, I love um, hiking. We've always done a lot of <laughs> hiking. It doesn't take long to get out of out of town no. and be right there. Yeah, I mean, I can. There's been times um, we're on the edge of town. And we can walk out our back door and go hiking, you know, with the permission Mm -hmm. of my neighbor. (laughs) (laughs) But um, we like to hike. Um, We like to go to the uh, shows, the Mueller Center. Mm -hmm. Um, We do a lot of gardening and sharing. That was one of the things we loved about the climate Mm -hmm. here is just incredible. And right now, this winter, I'm not so... (laughs) I'm wanting winter to be over with. (laughs) But once, once it does... Summers are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a lot of gardening and sharing produce and yeah. canning. and. Um, so, yeah, was there anything you wanted to let people know about where they can find more information about Sandstone Singers or where they should look for information about Sandstone Singers or if they want to join yeah. or reach out to you and, and maybe book you, uh, book Sandstone Singers throughout the season? Sure. Um, we have uh, a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And it's called, we've tried various ones. We're not uh, real good at setting up a nonprofit group organization on Facebook. It gave us some fits for a while there, and then we lost our password, and Uh-oh. Facebook wouldn't give it back to oh, us. Oh, no. <laughs> so, we, so you might find it in three different ways, but the one that works is Sandstone Singers of the Black Hills. And um, we can be contacted through there. We put all of our events on there. We put pictures on there. We'd love everybody to follow us on that. 
um, that's where we're going to try to keep updates for the community. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you again for sitting down, and congratulations for being nominated on Citizen of the Year. Uh, good luck, and uh, and and thank you for everything you've done. Uh, I remember, you know, uh, even because. I grew up in Hot Springs, and I remember as a teenager seeing Stan, Sandstone Singers perform at some of the, the various community events, and I've always appreciated, because I, I mean, I was in choir in high school, and you know, you, you learn how much work it takes, mm -hmm. and I, I definitely appreciate that, so thank you for what you thank do. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a great group, but they're just, they're tight, they're <laughs> willing to give. I, we, we put in about 6,000 hours of volunteer time wow. totally wow. in the community. So this is really about this group. I mean, they're just, yeah. they're, they're respected and they work hard and they're just good people. So thank you. Thank you.